Friends, it's Kate from Venice and Bernier. We are overrun with eggs right now. This is like a small fraction of what we have. I'm gonna show you how I use my freeze dryer, some things that I feel are not really shared about freeze dryers, and um, how to make this egg potato breakfast bowl because we got eggs needing to be used, we got potatoes sprouting. Friends, this sounds like we need to do some freeze drying. This is a turkey egg. Let me show you compared to a chicken egg. It's a little bigger. We have a small turkey, but how it cracks like tempered glass. They're a hot mess. So first of all, it's like really hard to break them. And when you do break them, the shell crumbles into a bazillion pieces. Takes some fancy footwork to not end up with it everywhere. Okay, how many eggs am I at? One, two, three, four, five. So sometimes when you wash eggs, there's like not quite a full dozen. So we just put them in this little side thing. Well, somebody put hard boiled eggs in with those. So I smashed some hard boiled eggs pretty good and they sure didn't crack. I have no recipe here for you. Essentially, you're making a bunch of scrambled eggs and you're mixing them with pre-cooked potatoes, pre-cooked meat, and I like to mix it together when it's cold and then add the cheese in, season it well. Um, don't add extra fat if you can avoid it. That would be helpful. Normally when I do bulk scrambled eggs, I want to do a lot of scrambled eggs. For every egg I add, I do a small crack turn on my salt grinder because I know one crack turn is what I put on one egg. We're gonna guess. We're gonna use this herb mushroom seasoning salt. This is a lot of eggs. I mean, at least a couple tablespoons. We'll see. Obviously these are not low fat foods, but I just mean don't go pan frying this whole thing in a bunch of butter. Just mix together the foods as is and then freeze dry them and that will give you your best, longest lasting results. Although I'm not doing this for really long keeping. For me, this is like to use within the next couple years. Um, it's quick breakfasts, it's using up foods that are starting you know, to go soft in our food storage from our garden, you know, the abundance of eggs. So not only do I just eat this for a quick breakfast sometimes, like if the kids are having something and I just really don't want it, then I'll make this. Thankfully, I have helpers like this sassy kid here, although I love how he quickly snaps to a straight face every time he notices me coming back into the room. But I truly wouldn't be able to do all I do without my kids who are so involved and helpful in all we do. I have a medium Harvest Right freeze dryer. Um, medium has four trays and each of those trays is as long as like your standard cookie sheet, which is a half sheet pan and half the size. So a freeze dryer load is two half sheet pans worth of food. So I feel like this is a great thing to visualize and to know. Okay friends, the freeze dryer is done. It's actually beeping at me to tell me process complete and it's been beeping at me for a while because I've been busy working on other things. So. I just had it, if you get to the point where you don't then take it out soon, it defaults into a deep freeze. So I'm gonna open this up now. So I had warm trays cause it was like minus 50 in there. Open it up and we're just gonna check in here. It went extra time so I'm fairly confident it's done because it also I didn't overload the trays. So you can see it's pretty wild looking like the potatoes. Huh? Hello? <laughs> hey Freya. Darius is working on replacing the windows right now. Anyhow, I'm gonna bring these into the kitchen. So I wanted to go over a couple things with you. 
that I feel are things not shared about freeze dryers. So first of all, it's not fast to freeze dry. Freeze drying is not a fast thing. Like it definitely takes longer than dehydrating. If you had just liquids in here, like if you had liquids in here and you didn't pre-freeze them, it would probably take two days to freeze dry. The other thing that I feel like, like I wanna know, how do I know if something's not good? Like when you open up a canning jar, like if you go to pop the seal and the seal really doesn't pop or this, you know, the lid was loose, you know it's bad. So how do I know with freeze drying? Well, if you open a package of something freeze dried and it's soft, not crunchy, it's not good. So that shouldn't be a thumbs up, but you know what I mean? Like that's, that's a great way to know, is it bad or not? Is it soft? It's not good. Another interesting thing is that dehydrating onions sucks. Your house smells, your dehydrator smells, it's a pain to clean. Freeze drying onions, so much easier to clean up. I'm packaging up the freeze dried things now. I'm putting them both in big bags. I'm not sure what size bag these are. They're from Uline. I like them because I can fit my entire tray in them. First you put the oxygen absorbers in and there's some math that I'm not, uh, it's hard to relay on how many oxygen absorbers to put in. Like 100 cc's per quart of bag. Anyhow. I like that I can just put the entire tray in this bag. It just makes things so much easier. Another thing I wanted to say about freeze drying is this freeze dryer, it heats up this room. And this room is below our bedroom. So it heats up our bedroom. Like if it's hot in here, like we don't have air conditioning. You can't run this in summer. So this is an impulse sealer. You can also use a hair straightener. I don't have one of those. I've never straightened my hair. I double seal it came outside because it's entirely too noisy in my house. But I wanted to show you rehydrating this. So this is actually one that's potato, egg, venison steak, and cheese. And I'm showing you this one instead of the ham one because this one is already open and in a jar. So this is the one that we use first. And I don't want to get another one on the go when we already have this one on the go. So when you're rehydrating things, Unless you like weigh things and measure things as to how much water you need, it's just a guessing game. And I don't weigh things, so it's just a guessing game. If you're doing a soup, then I find like if you filled the soup, you know, with the dry stuff up to here, you would put the water level with it. And when you add water to freeze dried things, they immediately like shrink in size before they soak up stuff so yeah if you're doing a soup you do cover it equally and it's good so when you're doing something like this that you don't want soup um i find like half and then in order to get it rehydrated properly we cover it in a plate so or you do it in a jar with a lid um but this works really well let me just show you. I've got boiling water here and I'm covering it just until I can see the water. This was almost borderline not enough. Actually, in the end, I had a couple crunchy potatoes, but that could have been because I was not patient enough in how long I let it sit. So let's cover it and let it sit for a couple minutes. The other thing I wanted to say was that this month Harvest Right is having freeze dryer sales for May. And I am an affiliate with Harvest Right, so I'm gonna add my affiliate link in the description. So if you are interested in a freeze dryer or it's been something you've been wanting to buy, I would super appreciate if you used my link. It doesn't cost you anything more, but I get a bit of kickback on that sale some commission that is very helpful and very, very nice. It's a blessing for my family. That's the word. It's a blessing for my family. Thank you. So it's been a couple minutes here. You can see we already lost a lot of the soupiness, but I like to give it a stir halfway. 
to make sure it's evenly hydrating. There still is a bit of a sloppiness at the bottom, but we're gonna lose that. It's gonna soak up. So I actually got this perfect, uh, which does not happen very often. Does publish, doesn't it? So we're gonna leave this a couple more minutes and then it's ready to eat. The last thing I wanted to tell you was to trust your freeze dryer. Too many people are adjusting the settings and adjusting things and then they have to keep testing or they're overfilling trays. If you follow the rules with what the freeze dryer says in terms of how much food you can put on each tray and you know, you press start and the thing has its sensors and it does its thing, I haven't had any issues. The issues I see are when people start messing with things. So have a lovely day, friends. I hope you enjoyed this.